So in this video, we are going to put it all together. We're going to take all the things we learned about the linear regression line in this video series, and we're going to get it all down on paper because we have a graph. So we're going to review the scatter plot and graphing rules and how to adjust and fix your window. We are also going to look at the values of A, B, R, and R squared, or otherwise known as the y-intercept, the slope, the um, coefficient, uh, correlation coefficient, and the coefficient of determination. Okay, so let us first of all prep our calculator. Get your calculators out and clear out list one and list two. Make sure those lists are clear. Um, and by hitting stat enter, you can then get to your list one, list two. And I, I actually, before the video started, I typed in all of my data. Please double check and triple check to make sure that this data matches where your temperature in degrees Fahrenheit is going to be in our list one and our number of visitors will be in list two. So you can kind of guess the context of the problem. Maybe you're organizing a week long um, state count, state or county fair uh, in your location and the temperature got increasingly hotter or this were this was the um, all the recorded <laughs> temperature data that you received and there was definitely different people coming on uh, different parts of the day uh, you know based on temperature so amusement park rides and stuff are probably more fun when it's warmer out so it seems like as the temperature went up the amount of people went up but there was some fluctuation near the high temperatures so let's do the linear regression t-test and write down all the important information so if I then click the stat button click the over to tests and then click up till I get to the linear regression t-test I like all of these defaults here so please scroll down to calculate and hit enter okay so the important information we need to get down for this part of the worksheet we need the a the b the r and the r squared so let's scroll all the way down here and grab those values whoops looks like my a went a little bit off the screen so we're going to type that in as negative 85.7 my b value is um by some beautiful um um, work on my part. The B is a whole number. We don't see a lot of whole numbers for these problems, so enjoy it while you have it. And then my R and R squared is 0.85 and also 0.73. I'm going to round pretty aggressively here. So let me let's write all that down. Hopefully you got the same things on your technology. Um, so again, I would try to practice this yourself um, just to make sure that you're going to see the right thing. So here's 85.7 and our B value was 10, our R was 0.85 and our R squared was 0.73. Now let's plan out our window here. Now Zoom 9 will get you the answer that you, you need but I prefer that you would uh, just actually look at your data set and figure out okay so my X minimum since this is my X minimum is going to be 60 and my max x my x maximum is going to be 90 okay so maybe i'll go from 60 to 90 and i could go by tens but maybe i should go by fives just because i can see more detail in that way my x my y minimum is 450 so maybe um, if i start at 450 now 450 is kind of a weird place to start maybe i should start at 400 and my maximum is going to be 750 and i could have went from 450 to 750 by 50s, but I'll go from 400 to 800 by 50s. Um, this is going to give me enough room to see the detail there. Um, of course, you could have went lower than 60 if you wanted to. You could have went from like 60 to 90 or 60 to 100 or 50, 50 to 90 or 50 to 100 to basically encapsulate everything that's there. And so it's kind of nice to then just mark our x and y axis right now. So this is 60. And if I'm going by fives, I can be a little lazy here and go 60, 70, 80, and 90. Okay, so what's cool is that I do have my fives spaced out here and I could write my fives in if I wanted to. But again, I can easily see that this is going up by fives. Starting here at 400, this would then be going by 50. So this 400, 450, 500, 550, 600, 650, 700, 750, 800. And again, I could have easily went from 450 to 750 by five or 50s. It would have been pretty nice. Now I'm going to look at my uh, data table and I'm going to just uh, plot some points here. 
So 60 went to 450, which is right here. Um, 65 went to 525. If this is 550, that is going to be halfway between. So I'm going to put my little dot there. All right, 70 was at 675. And you will have paper, pencil, homework that will make you do this, so get used to plotting this out by hand. Uh, all right, and the next dot would be at 75, which is 750. And 80 was at 775. And 85 would be at 725. And then 90 would be at 750. This is why I have paper, pencil, homework, because then you can have a little bit of variations in this X and Y scale. Um, and have a good picture. I really do not want you starting at zero in both of these cases because then the dots would be very difficult to read and this would be a better um, scale for it. Okay, now what we have is our ability to get this on our window screen for our calculator. So if I go here, first thing I want to do is go to my Y equals. Okay, my Y equals is nice and clear but I need to push the arrow key up once if this isn't done already and hit enter. Black is great, you wanna highlight that. So now what will happen is you'll see the dots. Click on the window key and change your window to what you typed in on your paper. So 60 and 90 going by fives, and then 400 and 800 going by fifties. And again, if you chose 450 and 750, you're gonna be okay. Then we click on the graph key and you can see that we have our dots, just like we have them on our paper. But now what I want to do is I want to type in my y equals equation right here. And that y equals equation is built off of the y equals a plus bx. This was at the top of the screen on the linear regression t-test. So that means we want our y1 to be negative 85.7. Be sure that's a negative sign and not the subtraction sign plus 10x. Could have also written this a number of ways, such as 10x minus 85.7. I mean, the order is not important as long as you have the y-intercept by itself. Okay, so I'm going to click on my y equals and type in my negative, make sure it's the negative key here, uh, 85.7 plus 10x. You also could have done 10x plus negative 85.7 or, I mean, there's just, there's really three ways to do it, but this is the way that the book, um, or sorry, the calculator has it. And so there is our beautiful line of best fit. And what I want to see with this, since I can't, you know, actually go to your house and take a look at this on the screen, you can take a look like, okay, it looks like my line is between the three dots here, but above these two dots here. So you can use that to draw your line of best fit, you know, by hand, in a very accurate way possible. Okay, so let me go take a look, compare what I just drew there to what's on the screen here. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Okay, now it says, what is the equation for the line of best fit? Well, I just ripped it off of here, here. So this is gonna be my y hat is equal to negative 85.7 plus 10x. Again, your XYZ homework may want the slope before the y-intercept, so 10x minus 85.7 may be the way it wants it. Just look for there for guidance. And now we're gonna translate the equation above into words that match the context of the problem. This goes back to our translation problem. So we start, or um, starting at the y-intercept here, negative 85.7, and this in terms of units is in the y unit. So starting with negative 85.7 visitors. Okay, and I'm gonna really, tr I'm gonna give you some explanation at the end of this why this is negative and why this may not make sense, but it is the correct answer. Starting at negative 85.7 visitors, we gain or add, I think add would be better just because you can then see how it matches the equation right there. We add ten p visitors per degree Fahrenheit. 
All right, so that is the translation. Starting at negative 85.7 visitors, we add 10 visitors for every degree of Fahrenheit. This is our translation of the equation. Now you might say, well, you can't have negative 85.7 visitors. Yeah, but that would be at zero degrees, which also would be just as silly. But you would see that our graph doesn't start at zero degrees because we're not gonna run this summer fair in a zero degree temperature so therefore it doesn't it, the, the equation makes sense numerically but then when you see it written out you go like that's not possible and you're right it's not possible we have to get much much warmer before those 85.7 visitors turns into a positive number luckily it's not doesn't take that long but you know you can see that it does model the equation pretty nicely so you add about 10 degrees or sorry 10 visitors per degree I know that right now, <laughs> if we decided to go to 100 or 120 degrees, this pattern probably wouldn't continue. This would probably curve and be either logarithmic, exponential, or quadratic. But at least for this reasonable range of temperatures, it seems to be linear. Now, what is the value of the correlation coefficient? All right, so according to our uh, data, the R is equal to point eight five okay that's right the r is equal to 0.85 you'll notice we wrote down the r value here but the book in the xyz homework is going to use its formal name the correlation coefficient now let's describe that correlation coefficient and what it means in the context of the problem well there is an 85 percent correlation between and it's between the X and the Y in this case so let's talk about this in units between the Fahrenheit degrees Fahrenheit that's the X and number of visitors and that's our Y all right so that's how you translate the correlation coefficient into context now, what is the value of the coefficient of determination? Well, we can square this number, or the calculator did so uh, adeptly. This is going to be 0.73, and this is always a positive value because squaring a positive or negative number gives you a positive value. Okay, so 73%. Okay, so let's rock this out here. 73% of the Y. Now, in this case, the Y is going to be... Um, the amount of visitors so 73 percent of the variation in the amount of visitors okay so it does follow the format that we learned on the previous video 73 percent of the variation in the y is explained by the amount of variation in the X. And the X in this case would be the temperature, or degrees Fahrenheit. T-E-M-P. Oh, I'm going to spell temperature wrong. <laughs> Look at your notes. It's spelled correctly in your notes. Okay. So, check it out. 73% of the variation in the amount of visitors is explained by the amount of variation in the temperature. All right, so it seems like that's a pretty good percentage here. And again, I would like you in this um, explanation to take the complement of 73%, which is 27%, and just say 27% is unexplained. I mean, maybe that's explained by if it was raining or not, or maybe the things that were at the fair, or the economy, or all sorts of different things. If there was a competing event, I mean, we don't know what these unexplained things are, but we do have to mention that, hey, there's the percentage of this thing that is unexplained, and the bigger the unexplained number is, the more we have to think about what could be causing some of that variation in the amount of visitors. Well, you did it. You really took uh, um, some time 
and you really broke down the linear regression t-test in terms of its a and b to make the line a best fit and its r and r squared to talk about correlation and relationships here. Now, <laughs> the linear regression t-test had other data on that screen. In fact, the data that it had on the screen, it had a T and a P, and it, <laughs> it had stuff getting us ready to do hypothesis testing. So stick around, because hypothesis testing is next, with lots of examples for you to learn from and to do your homework um, with. Thank you very much for watching.